Let's give Jesus a hand here today. Let's give him a hand. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be in God's house this morning. Enjoy the singing. And it looks good up here. They did a wonderful job with these uh, decorations and poinsettias and things. So, yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, so stand with me. I'm going to go to God's Word. Uh, John chapter 1, verses 40 through 42. And um, I just want to say our mission, vision, and DNA here is to worship God, to grow and serve. That's what we're doing. We're worshiping God. How many loves to worship the Lord? That's what we're here doing this morning. And uh, we are to grow, we're growing in God's Word, and we're serving in the kingdom of God. And somebody say, next steps. next steps. Come on, say it like you mean it here this morning. Come on, church, say next steps. All right, all right, I'm going to do a lot of that this morning, so I want to see some enthusiasm. I'm looking for some energy this morning. Somebody help me. I'm going to preach here this morning, but I need your help today. Now, don't ever forget, this is a Pentecostal church. This is a worshiping church, a Pentecostal church. So somebody say, next steps. All right, so if you're new at this church, or you're new-ish to this church, or if you just want to know a little bit more about this church, we are uh, doing our Next Steps class in January, and you'll see it on the screen, or you'll see it on the bulletin board, and you'll hear, hear us talking about it, because what I want you to do, I don't want you just to be a sideliner in the church, where you just come in and you just uh, look and watch, and uh, what's the word, spectator. I don't want any spectators in this church. I want you to be involved. I want you to be connected, and that's what I want to do. I want to get you in this Next Steps uh, class so you can be connected into the church because I believe that we all ought to be fully functioning individuals in this church. Don't you believe that? Because that's what God wants. I really think that's what God wants. God never called you just to come and watch. God never called you just to come and uh, uh, spectate or speculate or whatever the word is there. So let's look at the Bible, John chapter 1, verse number 40. And I'm not going to preach that long at all this morning. Some of you are so happy about that. You're so happy whenever I say that. <laughs> I'm not going to hold you long here at all. But I, like I always say, I do want to give you what God has given me to preach. Because that's, you know, if I don't do that, then I've missed the mark for this week. But let me, let me read this scripture. John chapter 1, verse number 40 through 42. And I really want you to get this one thing I want to pull out of here. So, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Do, does everybody have the scripture here? All right, yeah, number 41. Let's go to 41. And he first findeth his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted, the Christ. Now, verse 42, I want you to notice this. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, Jesus looked at him. Jesus beheld him, Simon Peter here. This is what Jesus said. Just, just get this picture. So Simon Peter walks up to Jesus, and Jesus looks at him. From the top to the bottom, just be beholds him, beheld him. And this is what the scripture said. He said, thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. You are Simon, the son of Jonah. But this is where I want to preach. He says, but thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. Jesus says, you are, but you shall be. You are right now one thing but you shall become something different. God, we love you today. We praise you, and I pray that you'd help me to preach your word this morning in the house of God, that something I say in this place would just touch somebody's heart. Through God, use me as an instrument for your will. God, it's not about me. It's not about us. God, it's all about you, Jesus. And I pray that the word would just uh, edify us and strengthen us. And God, give us something here today that can help us and bless us. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. 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 You are, this is what I'm preaching here today, you are, but you shall be. Let's say that together. You are, but you shall be. That is the key. You shall be. You can be seated here uh, if I hadn't told you already. You are, but you shall be. You will become. It's not always about what you are right now. It's about what you can become in Jesus' name. It's not always necessarily about what you are this very moment. Maybe some of you came in here not feeling too well. Well, this is not all about what it is right now. It's about what it shall be. That's the hope that we have in God. That's the faith that we hold on to. It's not about what you are. It's about what you shall become. Because you and I have the power to become Jesus Christ. The Bible says Jesus looked at Simon looked at Simon, looked him up and down. And the thing about Simon Peter, he was just a fisherman, just 
just a common person, just an average person, not much ed- education, not much learning. And I don't even know. I mean, maybe some of you Bible, sc- Bible scholars can tell me. Maybe Simon didn't even know how to read or ri- learn how to write, know how to write. He was just an average person, nothing special, just rough around the edges, didn't really bring much to the table. But Jesus does, is not just interested in about what a person is right now. He's interested in what you can become in Jesus' name. So he looks at him. The Bible says he beheld him. And uh, Peter, Simon Peter, he may have met, had many faults, may have had many mistakes. But the thing of it is, God is looking at me and God's looking at you. And it's not always about who you are right now. How many knows it's what you can become in Jesus Christ's holy name? That's the point, And that's the point I want to tell you here today is that it's not what you are. It's what you shall be. He beheld. And he's saying to him, right now you are shifting sand, Peter. Right now you're uh, up and down in and out. And all through the Gospels, we see that about Peter. He's up and down, in and out. One minute, he's on fire for God, and the next minute you see him, he's denying Christ. But Jesus says, it's not all about what you are now. It's about what you're going to be for Jesus Christ. He beheld him. He said, I know you. I know what you've said. I know your thoughts. I know you in and out. I know everything about you, but I know this one thing. Jesus is saying, when I get done with you, Peter, you're not going to just be shifting sand, but you'll be solid as a How many is glad this morning that God is not done with you yet? He's not finished with you yet. And what you are right now is not always what you're going to be. You haven't got as much of God as what you need. There's maybe some people listening to me say, I don't need any more of God. Well, you're deceiving yourself. We need more of the Lord. Oh, God, if I could just have more of you, God, more of you, God, because I know that I need to enlarge my capacity and say, God, if there's anything in this whole wide world that I need, it's more of the Lord. Lord, because if you get more and more of God, you'll be more blessed, you'll be more happy, you'll be a better person, and you'll be a success in the kingdom of God. I need more of the Lord here today. How about you? Now, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, it says, Jesus came to his own, and his own received him not. But those that did receive him, he gave them power to become. He gave them power to become the sons of God. It's all about what you can become in Jesus' name. Not about what you are right now. It's about what you can become in Jesus' name. I want to become something in the kingdom of God. See, right now, you might be a failure at every hand. I don't know what you are this morning. Right now, you may have some low self-esteem. You may be a failure on every hand. You may have problems that you're thinking about, you're dealing with, but it's not about what you drug in here this morning. And I'm hoping that by the time we're done with this service, the things that you drug on in here, you just leave them at the altar and you come out of here freer, lighter, with those weights and heavy sins cast off of you. It's not all about what you are. You got power to become the sons and the daughters of God. Now this is the thing. Have you ever realized that God's not done with you yet? You ever thought about that? That what you are now is not always what you'll be because God is not finished with you yet. And sometimes God works slowly. God doesn't work on our schedule. God doesn't even work by our blueprint. And God, every single one of us, me, myself included, and everybody on the stage, everybody from that side of the building to that side of the building to that side of the building, God is not done with you yet. He's still making you to be what you ought to be. He's still working on me. You know, like the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17 and 18, it says that God will take us like a piece of clay and he'll put us there on the potter's wheel. And he's the potter and we're the clay. And what happens is he begins to spin us around sometimes in life. You, you've seen it. We've all seen it where the, where the potter will take that piece of clay and he'll mold it and he'll shape and he spins it. Sometimes he puts a little bit of, of water on there and he just, he just begins to create it. And what happens is the thing about God is, is where the world will just throw you away when we mess up, Jesus, he just starts all over and he just continues. He doesn't throw the clay away is what I'm trying to say. You might throw yourself away and the world might throw you away. The world might write you off, but God never writes you off. He's still working on you. He's still developing you. He still wants you to, to grow and become something so you can be effective in the kingdom of God. How many in here wants to be effective here this morning? I remember an old story. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's clap for the Lord here this morning. I remember an old story about how many's ever heard of Michael Angelo here today. All right, he's a sculptor. And what he said, he's one of the best sculptors there ever was. He would walk by, there's a story that says he would walk by a piece of stone or a piece of marble with his friends and everybody around. And he would look at that thing. And Michelangelo would say, there is a, there's an angel inside of that piece of rock there. There's an angel inside of that marble. 
And everybody around here said, what do you mean there's an angel? All we see is a rock. All we see is just a piece of marble. And he said, no, there's an angel inside of that rock, and i got to get him out. And people thought he was crazy, but what he would do, Michelangelo would do, he would get him his hammer, and then he'd get him his chisel, and then he'd work on it and work on it and work on it and work on it. And then after long, after he worked on that piece of marble, that piece of rock for so long, eventually he was able to sculpt a big, beautiful angel out of that thing. See, that's the way God is with me and you. That's the way God sees something in you that you don't necessarily see in yourself. God sees something in me that I don't necessarily see in myself. See, we just pass by and the world just passes by and we say, what is that? But God, like Michelangelo, he says there's something inside of there and I just got to get it out. So what God does, he gets his hammer and he gets his chisel and he starts working on us and working on us and working on us. And before long, we're not just the way that we used to be. We're something stronger. We're something better. And God has pulled out a son, a daughter of God, and God has made you something that you never, ever in a million years would have thought that you would have become. See, that's what, if only you could see what God sees in you. I said if only we could see what God sees in us, then we wouldn't go around with our head hanging low. We wouldn't have depression. We wouldn't have anxiety. We would say, God, oh, just work on me. And sometimes it hurts when God works on us when he takes that hammer and that chisel and he goes to and, and, he, and he just works on us and works on us but before long we come out shining like gold exactly like God wants us to be and that's the power to become you shall be it's not what you are it's what you shall be in Jesus name now somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise in God's house here this morning if only you can see what God sees now some of you here today I don't know what you are some of you may be depressed, you may be confused, you may be living in fear, fearful. Some of you may be addicted to things you shouldn't be addicted to. Some of you here this morning, I don't know what you are, but you can classify yourself as somebody. Maybe you're socially awkward, maybe you're backwards, maybe you just don't have much going on for yourself. Maybe you're in financial trouble. I don't know what you are, but you know what you are, and God knows what you are. But God's not just interested in what you are. He's interested in what you can become. You may have marital problems, thousands of marital problems. That's not necessarily the case with God, because God can change things. The Scripture says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All oh, things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. If only you could see what God sees in you here this morning. God passes by you and he sees the rock of your life. He sees what's deep down in your soul that nobody else sees and he wants to bring it out. And I'm thinking about, and I can look across this building here today, and what are the possibilities in the folks, the young people? What are the possibilities in you? What are the possibilities that God can do with some of you? Think about where you are. I want you to think about where you are now. And if only we would allow God to use us and move us and make us and shape us and form us. If only we would allow God to do these things. I think about the, the possibilities. A lot of people don't think all they see is what we have right now. All they see is what they see in the mirror. All they see is their present condition. If you could only start to see the possibilities of what you could do, what you can become in Jesus' name, what it do? It would increase your faith. It will give you a smile on your face. It will give you a spring in your step. It will make life worth living again if you start looking ahead in faith to what God is going to do with you. It's not what you are, Simon Peter. It's what you shall be. Right now you're shifting sand. A lot of us are shifting sand. But before God's done with us, he'll turn us into a stone, strong and rock solid with him. Think about myself. And I don't really like talking about myself too much, but I, I know myself better than anybody does except God. And I can just tell you what God done with me. I mean, I was 14 years old, and I'd look at myself, and I'd say, man, I'm dumb as a rock. <laughs> I don't have any prospects. I don't have no education, hardly. I don't have any special skills. I can't do anything. I'm just a common person. And a lot of us, we feel like we're just common persons. But the Bible even says that the common people 
receive Jesus gladly. And that's what we had to do, and that's what I did. See, the rock of my life I wasn't much. I was kind of backward as a 14-year-old kid, kind of really socially awkward. And uh, you talk about me preaching now. I, I, I wouldn't and I couldn't get up and stand in front of people and talk. Just wouldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. I mean, I, I just, just kind, of, kind of backwards in a lot of ways. But you know what? God, that's, why, that's the way I saw myself, church. But you know what? How God saw me? God saw me a whole different way than I saw myself. God, I was just focused. On, so I was fixated on what I I was but you know what God said don't fixate on what you are just think about what you can become and you know what God did God started taking his hammer and his chisel and he started working on my heart working on my mind working on my mouth working on my soul and before long God started bringing something out you know I didn't have so a lot of you thinking here I didn't have no preachers in my family I didn't have any church we have went to church when I was growing up I didn't have any church folks in my family I didn't have any connections in my family I didn't come up from a, a, a preacher's house at all a lot of you can tell that uh, by the way I preach because I'm not the best preacher there is out there but I tell you what God saw something in me and God sees something inside of you don't diminish who you are don't put yourself down because you may see yourself in one way but God sees you in a whole different way just give it all over to God and say God and that's what I did at 17 years old I said God are you calling me to preach and yes he was and I went here there and yonder and I preached the gospel and praise God I'm still preaching the gospel it's not what you are it's what you shall become who would have ever dream the wonders of God's mercy that God would take somebody like me and a lot of you don't even know who I who I was I don't think there's anybody in this place this morning who knew me when I was 14 years old not one soul but if you looked at me when I was 14 years old you say man ain't much of nothing <laughs> I mean really I'm not trying to be funny I'm telling you the truth you would look at me and say that's not much of nothing there you would write me off like an, that's an accountant term, you know that? Write you off as a loss, as a liability, as something that just has zero profit in it whatsoever. But Jesus never writes anybody off. Jesus never says, oh, just get over there, you don't belong. Jesus never says, you'll never become. Jesus, you know what Jesus says? Just like Jesus told Simon, you are right now. He's not going to skirt the truth. He's going to tell you the truth. You, you are kind of messed up right now, Peter, but it's not about what you are. It's what you shall be in Jesus' name. Now, somebody praise God in the house of the Lord this morning. Now, I'm thinking about you. I'm not just talking about me. I'm thinking about you and what you can become. I'm thinking about what God can do with you in your life and what you can, how the, the, the process, the, the development, the, the change that God can work inside of your life. My goodness, don't fixate on what you are now. The good news today is that a lot of people don't really realize the possibilities that they have in God but you've got to start looking beyond what you are you got to look past the mirror you got to look past what you feel about yourself there's so many people today they are so insecure in their feelings they're so insecure in their current reality don't get fixated on who you are think about what God can do with your life thinking about Mary Magdalene in the Bible a lot of you've heard stories and uh, she was written off Mary Magdalene she was full of seven devils Seven devils, Mary Magdalene was, full of seven demons, in and out, tormenting her mind. People in the town said, that's Mary Magdalene, she's full of seven devils, and uh, write her off. She'll never be anything more than a crazy lady. Oh, crazy Mary, probably what they called her. When people passed by her house, they said, don't go in there, that crazy. don't even mess with crazy Mary, because she's got seven demons, never be anything. People had written her off, written her off, said she'll never become anything. People thought, well, maybe she will. No, no, she won't. She won't be anything. She's Mary Magdalene, she's full of seven devils. That's that's what everybody saw in her. But Jesus said, it's not what you are, Mary. It's what you can become. So Jesus got a hold of her and was able to cast those seven demons out of old Mary Magdalene. And you know what? God changed her whole outlook. And now the Bible tells us that she wasn't just Mary, crazy Mary with seven devils. She was Mary Magdalene. And you know what's special about that? Who would have ever dreamed or thought that Mary Magdalene was the one that first appeared at the tomb and the first one ever to see Jesus Christ rose the third day. Who, you know who the first gospel preacher in the entire world ever was? It was Mary Magdalene. She saw Jesus rose up and she carried the gospel to those disciples. Who would have ever dreamed that God would have turned her life inside out and upside down? Jesus never writes anybody off. Jesus never says, this is the ultimate, this is all there is. You'll never be, you'll never become. No, don't think that way. God can change you. It's not who you are church it's what you shall be in Jesus name praise God in the Old Testament in the Old Testament there's a man by the name of Naaman 
How many's ever heard the story of Naaman before? Now, Naaman was rotten on the outside as well as on the inside. On the inside, he was full of anger. Read, this, read, this, read the text. He was full of anger. He was full of pride. He was full of rage inside of his heart. But what was worse was on the outside, he had leprosy all over his body. All over his body. People would look at him and say, man, get away from me. I don't want, I don't want what you have. I mean, it's worse than anything we got now. You, you, leprosy, man, you, if somebody walked down the street that had leprosy, you'd get it sitting in your house. It was that contagious. We well, won't that bad, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, Naaman was a leper on the outside, but he was really a leper on the inside as well. He was just as disgusting on the outside as he was on the inside. See, he was a leader of the Syrian army. He was a mighty man, a mighty warrior, a captain of a lot of people. But just because he was a captain and a mighty person doesn't mean he was in good standing with God. But God saw fit to heal him. So God sent the prophet Elisha to him and said, Naaman, if you want to get healed, this is what you got to do. You got to go down to the River Jordan and you got to dip, not five times, but you got to dip seven times down in the River Jordan. Seven times. And Naaman, this is where his rage, this is where his anger, and this is where his pride started raising up in his life. He said, what do you mean i got to go dip down in the, don't you know I'm a mighty man? Don't you know I'm a captain of, of thousands and, and hundreds of thousands of people? I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not, I don't just go get in the river like a common person or an average person. And you know what? He said, I'm not going to do it. I thought God was going to send his, his prophet, and he's going to do something great. I figured he'd put his hands on my head or, or cure me, something like that. But his servants started saying, Naaman, if God told you to do something mighty, do something real hard, do something that nobody else could do, you would have done it. But his servants started to say, Naaman, what you need to do is just obey the voice of God and go down to the river and dip seven times. So what happened? He got loose of his pride. And he got down there in that Jordan River, that muddy Jordan River. And he started dipping down and dipping down. And you know what? It wasn't the water that was making him clean. It was God's hammer and God's chisel. And the water of God was breaking that pride off of his heart. The water of God, the chisel, the hammer of God started breaking the anger and that wrath off of his heart. And on the seventh time he came up in that water and God blessed him so much the Bible said his leprosy he was gone, fell off of him, and his skin was just like a newborn baby. And also his heart was changed. And he got up out of that water. Let me tell you, it's not who you are. Everybody looked at him and said, Naaman, you're no count. You're nothing. You'll just be a mean old captain for the rest of your life. But God passed by and says, no, I can change not only your skin, but I can change your heart. I can change everything about who you are. And he got out of that water, and you know what he said? His heart was changed. His wrath was gone. His anger was gone. His pride was gone. And he says, now I know that the God God of Israel is the only true God. Let me tell you, church, it's not who you are. It's not what you are. It's what you can become through God. Just think about what God can do. Think about the potential. Think about the possibilities. Think about what God can, get, can do if, he would, if you and I would just let God have his way in our life. There's a story about Gideon in the Old Testament. Now, Gideon, the Bible says that God said, Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor. You're a mighty man of valor. But you know what Gideon was? Gideon was over here hiding behind the wine press. He was shaking. He was nervous. And he was fearful because of the, because of the Midianites. That was the enemy of that time. But God didn't see what he was. Didn't see him shaking. Didn't see him nervous. Didn't see him quivering. God saw something down on the deep inside of that man and said, no, you're not scared. You're a mighty man of valor. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying here this morning? It's not what you are. God passes by and he doesn't just see who I am. He looks down into the heart of the matter. Samuel said, God said to Samuel, don't look at his outward appearance, but look at his heart. Don't look at things that people look at. Look at the inside of a man, because that's what God looks at. Everybody, King David, everybody looked at David and said, he's a small, young man, nothing much at all. Just write him off. I mean, everybody thought he was a, he was a weakling. He was uh, just nothing much at all. His brothers, even when there was an interview to be king, you know the story. Most of you know the story. When they were picking out kings, his own dad said, David, why don't you go take care of the sheep? They dismissed him. They dispatched him to the sheep coat because they didn't even think that he would be worthy enough to be a king. But that's what people say. That's what people look at. God doesn't look the way that men, men look. God looks the way that God looks. And God knows the heart of a matter. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying here this morning? Oh, somebody shout amen in the house of God today. The Bible says in Romans 4 and 17, God calls those things that be not as though they were. 
God calls those things that are. There's no evidence whatsoever. There's no visible sign whatsoever. God calls those things that be not as though they are. God looks at you. You pass, but you look at yourself. Sometimes I walk past the mirror and I say, my goodness, do I really look that bad? <laughs> and I'm not the only one that does that. I can, well, I'm not going to say any more. <laughs> we look at ourselves in the mirror. We think about our own selves. We are able to take ourselves out of our own shoes and look at ourselves and we thank God, is this all I'm ever going to be? Is this all I am? But that's the way we see ourselves. Don't look at yourself the way that you look at yourself. Look at yourself the way that, that God calls you. The God, the world may call you one thing. You may call yourself one thing. But you know what God calls you? God calls you more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You may call yourself one thing. You may call yourself a nobody. But God calls you more than able. I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. You ever heard that scripture before? We may say one thing, but God says a completely different story. And for you and for me, the story's not over yet. I heard a, I heard a story about a little eaglet. I'm almost done. A little eagle, baby, an eaglet. And what they did, they found this eagle out in the wild, and they took him and they put him in a cage with the chickens. They put that little eagle in the cage with the chickens. And the little eagle was walking around there, and he said, Man, I'm so happy I'm a chicken. What a wonder it is. What a wonderful thing it is to be a chicken. And he watched the chickens because chickens was all he ever knew. He had a chicken mentality. And when the chickens began to bow down and peck at the dirt, that little eagle pecked at the dirt too. And whenever the chickens started scratching in the dirt, he started scratching in the dirt. He said, I'm a chicken. I know I'm a chicken. Chickens are all I've ever known. But one day, time went on, starting to get a little older, starting to get a little bigger, he just felt something in his heart. And he said, man, I don't know if I'm a chicken anymore. <laughs> I feel a little different than these chickens. And uh, then he looked around. He said, no, I'm a chicken. Chickens is all I've ever known. Chickens is all I'll ever be. He had a chicken mentality. And then one day what happened is he got a little older, got a little bigger, and there's a wind storm started blowing around the chicken coop. And what happened, that wind got up under his wings, and then his wings popped up. He said, man, oh, man, look what I got. And he said, I got something these other uh, chickens don't have here. And he, he saw his wings stretch out real, real real wide and then he looked at his wings and his feathers started shaking he said man I know I'm not a chicken they don't have what I've got and he looked around he looked at the chickens and the chickens were looking at him saying what are you doing and he put his wings back down real nervous because he didn't want anybody to think he was something besides a chicken he said no I'm not a chicken I'm always a chicken a chicken's all I'll ever be but one day something started stirring on the inside of his heart and he said to himself he said this I feel like I am more I can become more than what I am and what he did he decided he's gonna jump up there on that post there's a little post that he jumped up there on the post and then he spread his wings out real far and then he started flapping his wings he said I think I'm more than what I am I think I'm more than what I am and he started flapping his wings and directly he began to take off and then the updraft came and this little eagle he started flying around soaring around and then he looked down and he said man I'm glad I'm not a chicken anymore <laughs> the question the thing I want to tell you here this morning is that what in the world are you doing scratching around with the chickens God didn't ever call you to be a chicken. God didn't ever you to call you to peck the ground like the chickens. God didn't ever call you to scrape at the ground with the chickens and to have a chicken mentality. What are you doing hanging around with chickens that all they're doing is keeping you depressed? All they're doing is keeping you depressed and down and diminished. What are you doing hanging around with folks that never want you to fly and never want you to soar? The Bible says that we are not called to be chickens, but we are called to be like eagles. The scripture says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles I will run and not get weary I will walk and never faint God never called you to be a chicken he called you to soar with wings as eagles somebody in this house this morning praise the Lord for what not what you are right now it's what you can be in Jesus name I look back in my life I'm glad I'm not who I was when I was 14 years old I'm glad I'm not who I'm who I was when I was at that time that place and 20 years from now, I'm going to look back to, what's today, December 7, 6, 5th, see? I'll look back at this day and say, man, I don't even know what day it was. And I'll be so glad that I'm not what I used to be. I'm so glad that I'm not what I used to be. Because one day I made a decision, I'm not going to stay the same. 
I'm going to do whatever I can do to get myself on the potter's wheel. So God can shape me and form me and, and change me. And God, I can get in God's presence. And whenever God gets that hammer and God gets that chisel out, I know that he's still working on me. I know that he's still working on me. I want to talk to you here this morning, heart to heart. Talk to you heart to heart. Where does this message find you today? Where does this message find you today? Every one of us in this place. Every one of us. If you look and search the deep depths of your heart, just like that little chicken, you can say, I know I am more than what I am now. I know I'm more than what I am now. What are you doing hanging around with the chickens? What are you doing hanging around with the turkeys? What are you doing hanging around with these folks that keep you pressed down, keep you diminished, keep you dispatched like David's brothers, keep you hidden behind the wine press like the Midianites? What are you doing hanging around these folks that write you off like those ones that wrote Mary Magdalene off, said you'll never become anything? Don't you ever, don't you never listen to anybody who says you won't ever do anything, you won't ever be anything. And some of you, some of you in here this morning said, I never, nobody's ever told me that before. You'd be surprised what people will speak into other people's lives. You'll be surprised. What people will speak in the children's lives. Say, so you'll never be anything. You'll never be nothing. You'll never amount to anything. If a teacher's ever told you that, they're wrong. And I'm not trying to be anybody's parents here this morning, but I'm going to tell you this. If your parent ever told you that, they're wrong. I got one amen. <laughs> Jesus says, it's not what you are. It's what you shall be. It's not where you are right now, David. You may be hanging out there with a the sheep right now, but it's not what you are. It's not even where you are. It's what you shall be. It's not what you are right now, Gideon. You may be hiding and shaking behind the wine press, but God says you are a mighty man of valor. Mary Magdalene, you may be cooped up in your house with those seven demons right now tormenting your mind, and people point at you and laugh at you and say it's all crazy, Mary, but just wait till Jesus passes by your way. Oh, church, just wait till Jesus passes by your way he'll see something inside the rock of your life that nobody else can see he'll see something deep down in your soul that you can't even see that your parents can't even see that nobody can see except God and God will get his hammer and chisel he'll start working on you he'll start working on you he'll start working on you therefore if any man be in Christ he's a new creation old things are passed away and behold all things become new when God starts working on you the scripture says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. Oh, I love that scripture that our dear sister, young sister, read this morning. God says, be therefore perfect. He didn't say that you could be perfect and not mean it. I'm just kidding. I don't mean, he says, you can be complete. You can be developed. You can be what I called you to be. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying here this morning? Oh, God, help me to become what you want me to become came into his own and his own received him not but those that did receive him gave him power to become you have power to become but you have to receive him I want to talk to you again heart to heart how many of you this morning can say I know that God's calling me to be more than what I am I see a lot of this I see a lot of this I'll be the first one to tell you I know that God's calling me to be more than what I am how many would lift their hands and say I know that God's calling me to be more than what I am. I want you to stand with me. If, God, if you know that God's calling you to be more than what you are, stand with me. I want us to have an altar service. I want you to just pray about this this morning. I want you to just pray about this, what I'm talking about here. Where does this, where does this message find you this morning? Where does this message find you? Let's pray. God, bow your heads, close your eyes. God, there's folks in here this morning that they're thinking to themselves, what I am is what I'll always be. God, there are folks in here this morning who are thinking there's no possibilities. I'm paralyzed. I'm stuck. I'm in a rut. I'll never get out. I'll never become. I'll never develop. But that's not the truth. And God, we know that's not the truth. God, you called me by this way this morning with this specific message, with this particular message for this group of people that's here. And I pray and ask in Jesus' name that you would break those chains. You would break that mentality. God, that you would break these things that are keeping us down. Oh, God, let us mount up with wings as eagles. Run and not get weary. 
walk and never faint. If you were one of the ones that lifted your hands, if you were one of the ones that stood up, if you were the ones that said, yes, yes, I think I can become more than what I am now, I want you to come and make your way around this altar. I want you to pray about these things. I want you to pray. And what I'm really asking you is to put yourself in the hands of God. I'm really asking you this morning is to put yourself in the hands of God and say, God, I am yours. Your will be done, not my will be done. See, the potter has got to have full control. I said the potter has got to have full control over the clay. And this morning, God, I want you to have full control over my life and heart. I want you to change me, my soul. I want you to change me and, and, and make me to be the man, the woman, the child of God that you want me to be. Come on, church, let's pray and give a hold of, get a hold of God. Let's pray this morning. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, just touch our hearts. Mm, God. Mm, Jesus. God, what I am now is not what I'm always going to be. What I am now is not always what I'm going to be. There's a possible you in there. There's a greater you in there. There's a greater you deep down in your soul. There's somebody that you can become. Don't get so fixed up and caught up on what you are now. Oh, God can change your life. God can change your heart. Oh, Jesus, bless our church. God, cover her with your strength and spirit. Come on, church, help me pray. I want to hear you pray in here this morning. Oh, God, we're not here and play, playing games today. We're not here just patty caking and messing around. But, God, our lives are hanging in the balance, Jesus. We want to become what you would want us to become, stronger. God, oh, more mighty through you to pull down strongholds in our home, to pull down strongholds in our life. Jesus, we are looking towards you, the author, the finisher of our faith. Bless my dear sister. God, walk with her. Give her the needs that she Oh, God, I pray that you meet her needs. God is able to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always have all sufficiency in all things. May it bow to every good word. Bless you, God. Oh, Jesus, I receive you, God. Work on my heart. Oh, Jesus, get your hammer and chisel and just work on me, Lord. God, you see something strong in there. Oh, God, see something mighty in there.
use us. God, I praise you today. Let us become. Let us become in Jesus' name. you shall be. Don't get stuck. Church, let me tell you. Let me tell every one of you. Don't get stuck at where you are now. Don't, don't get fixated on who you are right now. Don't get stuck there. Don't be paralyzed. Don't, don't get stuck in a rut because it's not who you are, but it's who you shall be. Somebody say, shall be. It's who you shall be in Jesus' name. Who you shall be. God wants to help every one of you. And this church exists this church exists to help people, to touch people's lives, to get you from one place to another, to get you from a place where, you know, you know, church, there are so many, so many folks now that they're running around and they're completely tormented by the devil. They are tormented by their own insecurities. They're tormented by their own feelings. But that's exactly where the devil, your enemy, will want you to stay. Right there, tormented, tormented, tormented for the rest of your life. But Jesus says, no, I want to get you out of that place. I want you to move from one point to another. And I want you, Jesus wants you to put one foot in front of the other. And keep on walking, keep on marching, keep on climbing, keep on climbing. I watched a documentary the other day about a mountain climber. And he, he made some sense. He could have been a preacher. He said, how in the world am I going to get to the top of the mountain if I stop halfway? I thought about that. I said, that's a, that's a good sermon right there. Maybe one for next week. I know it's Christmas time and i got to preach about Christmas and baby Jesus eventually. But, you know, I mean, I'm just preaching what God would have me to preach. And these flowers are just going to have to... Well, thank God Christmas don't last forever. <laughs> oh, some of you are going to get mad because I said that. Oh, forgive me. <laughs> but anyways, what I'm trying to tell you is you can't stop halfway. You just can't do it. you got to keep on climbing. You can't give up in the middle of this thing. Serving God is not a sprint. It is a marathon. It's a marathon. It's a, it's a decathlon. It's whatever the longest one out there. It's a double marathon. You just got to keep running, keep, keep walking, keep going, keep pressing. And whenever you feel like quitting, you know what you got to do? Don't quit. You'll never make it if you quit. Never make it if you quit. And people will point at you and laugh at you and say, what are you doing? You've lost your mind. God's not real. Blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And they'll say things like that, and I'm sure they said stuff like that to you. They've said it to me. But you know what I say? When I am cast down, the Lord shall lift me up. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Micah 7 and 8. God's with you today, church. God is with you. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. You're never alone. It's not what you are. What you are. It's what you shall be. Don't forget our announcements. Don't forget our Christmas play is next week, right? Next week. So you kids, they've been doing a wonderful job. Man, they have been learning those lines. They've been singing. And we, it's going to be a good place. So I want you to make sure you come next week 
on Sunday morning and bring your family, bring your friends, and you're going to be tickled to death over these kids up here singing and doing their thing. And we got Santa Claus going to be here. Santa Claus is, well, I'm not going I'm, <laughs> I'm to I'm uh, spoil the play for you. But uh, you know what I'm saying. It's, going, it's for the kids. And it's for your parents to, to watch your kids. And I want to support our children. I want to support our teenagers. I do. I do. And uh, we haven't written anybody off at this church. Don't no matter who you are. Don't no matter what you look like. <laughs> Don't no matter where you come from. We don't write anybody off around here. We say, God, just put us on the wheel. Shape us, mold us, make us. In Jesus' name. God, we love you today. We thank you and praise you for all you're doing. I pray you continue to bless our church, help our church to develop and be what you want it to be. And God, we praise you. We lift our heads towards you. We lift our eyes towards you. And we ask you, God, to help us to understand and realize it's not what we are. But it's what we shall be in Jesus' name. And everybody gives the Lord a hand clap of praise like you mean it. And everybody shouts amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. And goodwill towards men. God bless. We'll see you. Have a good lunch.